Good afternoon and welcome to our um, live streamed uh, press conference around COVID-19 here in Tennessee and the things that we're doing to address uh, this virus and to minimize its impact on health in our state to protect the lives of Tennesseans and to minimize its impact on the economy of Tennessee as well. Uh, you know, I just want to start by saying there has been a lot of work done over the last couple of days since we ha last had a press conference. And a lot of that work is very hopeful. And there are a lot of hopeful developments in our state. Um, Tennessee is a very uh, innovative and creative place. Um, we, are, we have brilliant healthcare minds there in particular. And there is great work, not only in what we're doing to address today's situation, but to address this virus and its impact on the country in the months ahead at UT Health Sciences Center in Memphis. They are uh, developing and testing right now drugs to attack COVID-19. In Oak Ridge, uh, the supercomputing power we have there is developing a model on how this virus travels that will help our country understand and better attack the virus over the coming months. Right here in Vanderbilt, there is uh, hard work to identify corona body antivirus uh, therapies. So we've got really brilliant minds developing really innovative ways to attack the virus, but we're also doing things every single day right here to make sure that we keep Tennessee and safe. And, and it, it's hopeful for me, these are hopeful developments because I know that we're going to overcome this, we're gonna get through it, and, and my goal is to get through it uh, with, the, with the best possible results that we can get here in Tennessee. So I wanna give you some updates. Um, some reminders, our current um, confirmed cases in Tennessee is 615. Yesterday, I signed Executive Order 17. It'll remain in effect until April the 6th. You know, this uh, pandemic is not only a health crisis, but an economic crisis, and the decisions that we're making every day are trying to alleviate both of them. Executive Order 17, we believe, does that statewide. It prohibits social gatherings of 10 or more people. Uh, restaurants are exclusively to offer drive-through, takeout, or delivery options to support families and businesses. Establishments can sell alcohol by takeout or delivery with the purchase of food um, to in, in closed containers to those who are 21 and older. Gyms are to temporarily close. Bars are to temporarily close. And I've limited nursing homes to essential care visits only, remembering that the elderly are the most vulnerable population in our state. They're the ones that we need to take care of the most. Uh, I will say that earlier today, I spoke with and have had continuous conversations actually with mayors of our major metropolitan areas across the state. And we talked specifically about their targeted solutions in their high density areas. Uh, to keep their populations safe, and I certainly support those solutions. This, is, this virus does not act the same in high-density areas as it does uh, in, in other areas. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution, and that's why leaders across this state are working together to make sure that our concerted efforts are, um, are mitigating this disease to the possible, or this virus to the, to the degree that we can. My focus today is going to be the establishment of what I'm calling the COVID-19 Unified Command. I want to provide an update regarding our efforts to acquire more personal protective equipment. And I want to discuss uh, Executive Order 18, which I signed today. You know, the scope and magnitude of this pandemic uh, requires governments across the world to rethink uh, the traditional approach to problem solving. It, it has required this state and me as governor to rethink our approach as it has developed uh, to attacking this in a more aggressive way. So today I'm announcing the um, establishment of the COVID-19 Unified Command in Tennessee. I've appointed Commissioner Stuart McWhorter to head this strategic joint effort between TEMA, the Department of Health, and the Department of Military. Commissioner McWhorter will step away from his role in finance and administration as the commissioner of FNA to head this very important effort. Uh, I've I have appointed Eugene Newbert as acting commissioner of FNA, 
while Stuart McWhorter uh, steps in as the director of the COVID-19 Unified Command. We have appointed retired Brigadier General Scott Brower to serve as Chief of Staff for the Unified Command. And the command itself will consist of Dr. Lisa Piercy from the Tennessee Department of Health, Major General Holmes from the Department of Military, and Patrick Sheehan from TEMA. I've appointed the Unified Command to effectively change the way we attack COVID-19 in Tennessee. Uh, as we work together to simultaneously address the health and economic crisis. This, this task, this team will be tasked with um, finding innovative, creative, quick decision making and uh, efficient approaches to testing, to medical supplies, to, uh, for hospital beds, for hospital capacity, for quarantine strategies, for the increase of medical personnel that will be needed as this virus uh, increases in our state and the, and the health needs associated with it. So it's a very important strategic decision that we have made structurally in the governor's office to make sure that we are doing everything we can in this state innovatively and creatively uh, to get through this with the best possible results at the end. I want to give an update on personal protective equipment. It's a lot of conversation in this country and in the state around the need for medical supplies and um, the fact that those supplies have dwindled as the virus has uh, increased across the state. But I, I was at, I'll, I'll start off by saying I was on a phone call today with the vice president uh, and a number of other governors. And we were talking about personal protective equipment and how it's being distributed around the country. And let me just say, there are some very promising developments uh, that are happening in the coming days as has been happening over the last couple of weeks, but uh, there's a, a tremendous national movement toward the production of personal protective equipment um, for states all across the country, and we will be beneficiaries of that. Uh, it's hopeful, but we are not depending on others to find and source personal protective equipment for our state. We are working really hard uh, within our own departments to do that. We, ha we have dedicated resources there. And part of what we're doing is trying to, again, to be innovative and creative. And I, wanna, I want to uh, give you an example. I want to give everyone an example of what's happening in our state and effective, creative approaches to this. So we have eight of our higher ed education institutions, four of, four of which are uh, TCATs, by the way, who are 3D printing face shields. Uh, these face shields will allow a healthcare worker to extend the use of their face masks when dealing with uh, COVID patients. I, I, sh I show this because it's just one small example of the way that we're utilizing our institutions of higher education, uh, the manufacturing companies across Tennessee, our, um, our private sector health providers, all working together to aggressively increase the supply of personal protective equipment that will allow our incredibly important frontline healthcare workers uh, to operate safely. And that is a tremendous focus of ours as these men and women put themselves in line to treat those with COVID-19. I wanna talk about Executive Order 18 as it relates to personal protective equipment. Today I signed Executive Order 18, which prohibits hospitals and outpatient surgery centers from performing elective surgeries. It prevents dentists and dental clinics uh, from continuing dental services, except for emergency dental services. And practitioners are asked to donate their personal protective equipment from those facilities to the nearest National Guard Armory. Uh, that executive order goes into place until April 13th. So in effect, what we're doing is closing down uh, outpatient surgery centers and dental clinics to provide for a temporary time to provide personal protective equipment uh, that is stored in those facilities or that are a part of those facilities for the greater uh, healthcare use for COVID-19. One of the other things that it allows us to do is have access to ventilators through the uh, Association of Anesthesiologists who've been working across the country uh, to free up these ventilators that are used in outpatient surgery centers 
and adapting those for use uh, uh, with COVID-19 patients. So this one move will both free up PPE and medical equipment um, like ventilators that's going to be incredibly important in the days ahead. We will take these steps one at a time. We will sign executive orders one, of, as a time, one at a time as needed, all in an effort, um, all in an effort to keep Tennessee and safe. I'll give you an example today of just one step forward in personal protective equipment. We look every day to order uh, masks and suits and gowns and shields. And even today I talked with uh, Dr. Piercy and we, we received 430 Tyvek suits today. Just one example of what we're doing every single day to step by step improve the supplies that we have as we anticipate an increased need for all of those. Uh, before, we, before we go to questions, I will, I will close just by saying this is, this is a time for innovation. And there is no one better than Tennesseans who can innovate. There's no one better than Tennesseans who can step up to the plate and can do what is necessary to address this. We will get through this, but we want to get this, through this like Tennesseans. We want our neighbors to help their neighbors. We want our neighbors to serve the elderly. We want Tennesseans to go out and give blood because there's a national shortage. We want Tennesseans to stay home if they can stay home. Quit going out if you don't have to go out. Don't gather with people if it's not absolutely required that you be there for some essential service. This is incredibly serious to the state. It's incredibly serious to the lives of Tennesseans. Every single Tennessean should wake up and take personal responsibility for saving the lives of the people around them and for saving the livelihoods of their neighbors. Because if we can mitigate this in a substantive way, then we can minimize the amount of, uh, of uh, financial damage that occurs to Tennesseans. It's time and we of all people can do it. So we wanna open this up to questions. I'm, I'm gonna ask Major General Holmes from Department of Military uh, Director Patrick Sheehan from TEMA, Commissioner Stuart McWhorter, uh, Dr. Lisa Piercy from Department of Health, and Brigadier General Scott Brower, uh, who all are a part of the COVID-19 Unified Command to be available for questions as well. They'll, they'll be, uh, they're available here in the room for questions, and we will, we will take those questions uh, via technology now. Great. All right. Thank you, Governor. And we'll open this up to questions. I'll go ahead and call you out. If you could just repeat your name and your outlet and then proceed with your question. And if you do have it for one of the Unified Command members, please be sure to designate that as well. First, we'll go to Jonathan Matisse with the AP. Uh, hey, Governor, can you actually hear me? Yes, sir, I sure can, Jonathan. Perfect. Um, I wanted to check with you. Uh, have you folks seen any spread of this virus amongst uh, Healthcare providers at this point, or among healthcare providers and patients, is that becoming an issue? I know that's been a big problem in some other places, and has been in, uh, you know, a cause of some outbreaks. Uh, I'm going to let Dr. Piercy uh, address that. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you for the question. Um, we have seen isolated pockets in healthcare workers, as well as isolated cases in patients. Uh, I will warn you that we are likely to see more of that and uh, want to reassure you that, uh, our, as the governor has already stated, our healthcare workforce uh, is of utmost importance to us. They're the ones on the front lines doing the work every single day, uh, and we are trying to make their jobs as safe uh, and as easy as we can uh, as we address this. Uh, so, so to answer your question, yes, there have been limited pockets, and unfortunately, we do expect more. Thanks, Jonathan. Next up, we'll go to Chris Bungard with WKRN. Hi there. On the same way of asking as Jonathan, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We sure can, Chris. I have a sense of the uh, unemployment numbers this week in Tennessee. We've been hearing reports over the weekend of 3 million nationwide forecasting. Or forecast. I've actually... Um, spoken with Department of Health Commissioner and had our team working together 
not only to we, we do not have an answer yet as to what who how many have become unemployed in the last uh, in the last few days. Executive Order 17 would have uh, started the process tonight. Actually, goes into effect, and uh, we, we obviously will have some significant increase in unemployment as some of these businesses begin to uh, limit services. But I've asked our Department of Labor to track that for us as the days unfold uh, so that it helps us understand the implications of decisions. As you know, part of my goal is to uh, aggressively address this health crisis that we have. But you know, we have a lot of folks who stand to have real hard economic times uh, as a result of this. And the decisions that we made as, uh, make as leaders have profound in impact on people's lives, both economically and from a health standpoint. And not just COVID-19 health standpoint, but mental health, uh, issues related to poverty and loss of, uh, loss of work. So there are a lot of implications. We do not have numbers around unemployment yet, but we'll be working on those. All right, we'll go to Natalie Allison with the Tennessean. Hey, Governor, can you hear me? Hey, Natalie. Yes, I can. Hey. Okay, so last week you had said that um, a couple members of your senior staff had been tested for COVID, that they were um, in self-quarantine awaiting results. Um, have any of those staff members received their results back yet, and, and what were those results? This, one of them tested negative and one of them tested positive. So are you taking any kind of precautions at this point? Do you know if you were exposed to them? Well, we're live streaming this uh, this uh, press conference and previously we've had press conferences with uh, uh, large groups of folks in them. So that's an example of the very um, serious steps that we're taking here in our office uh, to protect everyone. Um, I, I'm, I've taken personal steps to do the same thing. Um, and I, my exposure to those, uh, to the, to the staff member that was uh, positive was, uh, very limited. So, and I have no symptoms, so I haven't, uh, there's not a, there's, I feel confident about my own situation, but, um, we're taking every step we can to be safe as every Tennessean should do. Next, we'll go to Jason Lamb with News Channel 5. Governor, you've urged residents to stay home. You've mentioned you've been talking to other governors across the state. Several other governors have issued statewide stay-at-home orders by now. A group of more than 2,000 doctors has sent you a letter asking you to also issue a stay-at-home order, saying we're not acting with the same boldness as other countries. The Middle Tennessee Mayor's Caucus has endorsed the stay-at-home proposal. What do you say to these doctors, and why shouldn't you be ordering all Tennesseans to stay at home now? Yeah, I think that um, when you're in a situation, when you're in the position I am, that you, you take in a lot of information. You take a lot of requests from a lot of different people. There are a whole lot of, uh, uh, there are a whole lot of pieces of information that say different things about the right time for the right decision. So for me, it's about the right time for the right decision in the right place. Every city is different, every county is different, every state is different. There's no one size fits all. There's no guaranteed solution. Uh, and so we're, we're being very thoughtful to work together. Um, like I said, I'm talking to our major mayors. I had a call with county mayors across the state. Uh, there's an effort to do the right thing for Tennessee to slow the spread of this disease. And uh, I believe we are doing the right thing. And, and as I've said a week ago or several days ago, Nothing is off the table, and decisions change every day. If, if you're not nimble and you're not willing to uh, take in new information and make new decisions based on new information, then you're, then you're, gonna, you're not going to make the right decision at the right time, but that's our goal. Next up, we'll go to Sam Stockard from the Daily Memphian. Uh, yes, good. Okay, I lost you, Sam. Um, Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Well, no, sir. A little technical. I guess it'll be a challenge doing this. Try it again, Sam. All 
All right, let's try to let's try to get Sam back on. We'll we'll yeah. get you, we'll get you back on, Sam. We'll go to the next one and then let's try it again. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Alex Apple with Fox Seventeen. Yeah, hey, Governor Alex Apple here. Jason's question. Um, I'm wondering if you have talked with any other governors about their advice, perhaps places like New York or other places that seem to get infected a little bit more quickly than Tennessee, about their advice about whether it is good for a city or state to lead as far as, um, you know, putting forth uh, something like a shelter at home order or anything perhaps even more uh, stringent than that, at, simply because it creates more of a unified response um, than uh, you know, a city sort of going about this on their own. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been on the phone. I, I, I talked to probably five or six governors individually this weekend. I was on a phone call today with uh, probably 40 governors. I've been on the phone call with, I've, been, I've talked to governors in multiple venues and multiple settings individually and in groups uh, many times over the last week or two. And it's a great resource. And, and we just are trying to figure out together what's the best approach. And as I said, every state's different. Every approach is different. Their populations are different. The sizes of their cities are different. The densities of their populations are different. And that's the reason you have different things happening in different places. I can tell you this, every governor in this country is trying to make decisions that they believe are gonna slow the spread of this disease and mitigate the economic damages to their state. Every governor is doing so. They're not easy answers. No one has found the key, uh, in part because we're not gonna stop this disease, I mean, this virus, we're, we're gonna mitigate it. And so yes, I've talked to, talked to many and there are different strategies going on across the country. Uh, I do think that the way we're doing it here in this state for the uniqueness of our state is the best approach and I evaluate it every single day and talking with leaders across our state every day. All right, let's go back, Sam. Can you try again? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I don't know what it is, Sam. I can hear you ask the question, but I can't hear you. I can't hear you finish. Mm -hmm. How do you do it again? All right. Okay, are you ready? Uh, give it a shot. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, President Trump had said, uh, he tweeted out something today saying the, the cure can't be worse than the problem itself. And it sounds like he's saying if it's not over in 15 days, he's going to encourage things to go back to normal. What's your response to something like that? You know, I, I, I haven't seen his tweets today. And, um, I really haven't evaluated that idea. I haven't, I haven't heard of that idea f today, if it's changed from something earlier, but we are, we have a long, we have a long view on this. Um, this is not going to go away in 15 days. We know that. Uh, we, uh, that's, that's in part the reason why we're setting up this unified command. It's why we are working in our, uh, healthcare institutions develop, uh, to develop strategies for, drugs to treat and for uh, strategies to see how this, how this virus tracks. Uh, we are putting in place strategies for increasing our hospital beds, our hospital capacity, bringing more healthcare workers online. This is going to be quite an effort for quite some time. But if we do this right, then we can get through it in a way that, uh, that, that that minimizes the damage economically and from a health standpoint. That's what we're trying to do here. So uh, 14, 15 days, that's a really important period of time over the next two weeks for Tennessee. But we have a long uh, runway ahead of us which, with which to solve this problem. And I'm, uh, I'm encouraged about the direction that we're headed. All right, we'll go to Marta Aldrich with Chalkbeat. Yes, Governor Lee, this question is related to the stats of school closures across the You just said that this is not going to go away in 15 days. That would suggest that your earlier call to close schools through the end of the month will be extended as well. 
is there a new date for reopening? And, and again, given the continued spread, what do you think the chances are that students will not be able to return to school at all this academic year? The governor of Kansas has already ordered schools to close for the rest of the year. Thanks, Marta. Um, we were, we're evaluating that. We had that conversation just this morning because uh, the date is upcoming soon about whether or not uh, about, about reopening. So we're going to be making a decision in the next couple of days about whether kids come back to school on the date uh, that we had previously announced or whether we'll extend that closure. Uh, we haven't made that decision, but we will do that. We will be doing that this week. Next, we'll go to Eric Shelzig from the Tennessee Journal. You there, Eric? All right. We'll go to let's let's move on then to Stephen Elliott from the Nashville Post. All right, technical difficulties here. You don't think he's there? Okay. Um, let's do uh, Kara Hartnett from the Nashville Post. Are you there? We'll unmute your line. Do you have a question, Kara? Patience, everybody, while we have our first live streamed uh, news press conference for, of the of the year. All right, let's try uh, Chris Peralta. Chris Peralta, your mic is unmuted. We gotta look for Sam again too. Remember, we he, he didn't answer. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, All right. At this point, we'll, we'll have to uh, suspend questions for today. We will be back tomorrow at the same time, and we'll work out some of these technical difficulties in the meantime. But, Governor, do you want to give a closing statement? No, I, I, I'll, I'll, uh, yes, I'll just wrap up by saying uh, the same thing I say frequently, and it's, it's up to every single Tennessean to address this problem. We all have to own it. We all have to take personal responsibility for our behavior. And it's not just for our own health, but it's for the health of our neighbors and especially our elderly neighbors. So uh, do what Tennesseans do, step up. We're going to get through this and we're going to get through it together. Thank you for being here.